Bienvenidos and welcome to the Fiesta. We have planned a wonderful evening for you tonight. I'm Diana Martinez, your host for this evening, and we are here live thanks to the world's greatest film crew, direct from the College of DuPage Multimedia Studios. I'm here with Paul Thompson, who created all the amazing videos you will see tonight. James Nocera is steady at the helm directing the show and talking in my ear. Sal Garcia is running sound, and Angela is on the teleprompter. The incredible crew are running cameras and bringing you this live feed. Karen Kuhn, the executive director of the foundation who spearheaded this beautiful gala, is manning the phones with the advancement staff, and they are ready to take your calls. Also here with me tonight is Walter Johnson, our newly minted VP of advancement, who is running the grand tote. How's it going over there, Walter? It's going fantastic, Diana. Listen, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this evening. And on behalf of the college president, Dr. Caputo, and our board chair, Finney, and um, the trustees, we're just honored to be a part of this. And we can't wait for what's going to happen next. Diana, this is exciting. It is exciting. I am so grateful to all of you who are watching and supporting tonight. I have neighbors watching, we have sponsors, and artists who have created beautiful elements of the show who are watching, and it's because of all your enthusiasm that this exhibition has grown into a statewide celebration. On behalf of everyone on the Mac staff, I can share that we are so thrilled that we are finally gonna be opening the Frida Kahlo Timeless Exhibition this summer. Since we've had more time to plan the exhibition, we've added COVID safety protocols to keep you safe. We will have reduced occupancy, temperature scanners, touchless ticketing, downloadable tours, and Justin Woody, our curator, has reworked the exhibition to offer more social distancing. We've also come up with more ideas. We will be taking over the Playhouse Theater to expand the gorgeous display of 100 photographic images included in the exhibition. And we added a replica model of Frida's Casa Azul. It's her home in Mexico. And also, as we speak, greenhouses full of gorgeous plants indigenous to Mexico are being grown at Ball Horticultural for our gorgeous Frida Kahlo garden. Something that we haven't told anyone yet is that Frida will be featured in a gorgeous animated digital public art installation at Art on the Mart. This will be projected on the front of the Merchandise Mart opening in July. One more phenomenal artist has joined our effort. World-renowned immerse, immersive artist George Berlin is designing the installation and he just happens to be a former COD teacher and Glen Allen resident. The amount of talent we have found in this community is absolutely overwhelming. And speaking of our district, there are many dignitaries and elected officials watching from home tonight who I'd personally like to welcome. Reina Torres Mendeville, Council General of Mexico. Tara Costa Howard, Illinois State Rep. Greg Hart, DuPage County Board. Gwen Hendry, DuPage County Board Treasurer. Heidi Holm on our COD Board of Trustees. And our President of the COD Board of Trustees, Ms. Christine Fenney. Our Board Chair of the President of the DuPage Foundation Board, Mr. Sherman Neal. Former State Senator and Chairman of the RTA and COD Foundation Board Member, Kirk Dillard and former Glen Allen Village President Mark Pfefferman. Welcome to everyone. We have an extraordinary evening of guests and fun planned, and I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you to our gala sponsors. We could not do this without you. The Shebik family, Mark and Marcy Peterson, Doug Peterson, AIG Retirement Services, Christopher B. Burke Engineering, A. Traub and Associates, and CBK Global. You have made tonight possible, and we can't thank you enough. Now, make sure you look at the amazing silent auction prizes online. There truly is something for everyone, from a trip to Florida, to an Apple Watch, to free to hand design soaps, free to theme gifts, restaurant experiences, a wine and chocolate tasting, and last night, 
I had the most wonderful surprise of a new silent auction gift from Mark White. Just take a look at this. This home is in San Miguel. It's in an exclusive gated community. It features six bathrooms and bedroom suites. It sleeps 12 and is a short walk to the beautiful downtown. It's just been rated one of the top places in the world to visit by Travel and Leisure Magazine. This is a priceless opportunity and we're so grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark White, for this amazing opportunity. If you want to bid on this unique prize and haven't done so already, go online to freetotwogivesmart.com to register and bid. If you want to donate and you're not comfortable doing it online, it's okay. We have operators standing by who will take your call. Just dial 630-942-2462. I want to see what your party looks like at home, so will you please take a quick photo of your party at home and we'll post them at the end of the show. We cannot wait to see what your party looks like. Don't forget, so please send a quick photo of your fiesta to 630-618-0498 and we'll post it later. Dr. Brian Caputo, president of College of DuPage, also a member of the Free to Host Committee and champion of making the arts a pillar of the college, has sent a video message to welcome you tonight. Please welcome Dr. Brian Caputo. Good evening and welcome to For the Love of Frida, Bringing It Home 2021 Virtual Gala. I would like to personally thank you for joining us tonight. As we near the finish line to the launch of the highly anticipated Frida Kahlo Timeless exhibit, this event was designed especially with you in mind. Because of your ongoing support, our live stream gala promises to be an extraordinary experience and undoubtedly a night to remember. Each of you is helping to pave the way for the Frida Kahlo Timeless exhibition to arrive safe and sound this summer right here in Glen Ellen. Frida Kahlo's powerful contribution to the arts is still underscored throughout the world today, impacting performing artists, designers, painters, and spoken word performers and educators across the globe. Presented by the Cleve Carney Museum of Art and the Mackinac Arts Center at College of DuPage, the exhibit is a comprehensive presentation of the life and works of Frida Kahlo. The 26 original pieces of art represent an exclusive framework of the life circumstances and events that led to Frida becoming one of the most impactful painters of the 20th century. In addition to the original works of art, the immersive artistic platform features a multimedia timeline with reproductions of Frida Kahlo's clothing, as well as more than 100 unique images from her life, a family-friendly children's area, and a Frida Kahlo-inspired garden designed by Ball Horticultural. We hope to see you there. I want to show you this item that was delivered to my home yesterday for the auction by artist Sarah Dezara. Sarah saw the gala on my Facebook page and said, I want to donate something. I want to help. And this is what she made. It's a hand-painted denim jacket with an exquisite reproduction of the iconic Frida Self portrait with Thorn necklace. If you want to see more of Sarah's work, check out her website at vivaart.com. It's absolutely amazing to see how many artists have stepped forward to be a part of this incredible exhibition. And by the way, if you're wondering what size this is, I'm a size eight and it fits me perfectly. I think I might be bidding on it too. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, I wanna introduce you to another amazing artist who has stepped forward in so many ways. Jeff Bevington is here tonight painting a canvas, a work that tonight you can bid on throughout the night. Jeff is the artist who painted the mural in downtown Glen Ellen, and he offered to help us with our gala tonight, and I'm so grateful for you to be here and give us your time and talent. Jeff, tell everybody what you're painting. I'm painting a stylized version of the Frida logo, um, accenting on the flowers, of course, on her red lips and the beautiful eyebrows. Jeff, um, you were inspired to paint by your grandfather, right? Yes. Can you just share a little bit of his story? My grandfather um, painted in, um, for, 
in Los Angeles for MGM, created titles, and one of his things he did when he retired was to paint murals across East LA and to get gangs involved so that they wouldn't tag the buildings, they would paint murals. And it was an incredibly successful project. A lot of murals are still there today. And, and you had students help you to get the background painted and, yep. and they had such a ball. Yep. Thank you for being a part of this in so many ways. Thank and you thank you for being me. here tonight, Jeff. It's great. So Jeff Bevington, we're gonna come back and see how it's coming now. In your party pack is a box with ingredients for a magical cocktail that's sponsored by La Tequileria in Melrose Park. So I want you to please go get some ice, get a plate so you can mix your drink along with Elliot Ocasta, a premier mixologist from La Tequileria who is de designated with the Distinctivo Award for their incredibly high quality authentic tequila that they serve. It's such a beautiful kit that they delivered and provided for all of you tonight, and we're so grateful. Okay, so while you're getting your ice and your plate ready to mix your drink, please make sure to snap a picture of your cocktail and text us your picture to 630-618-0498. All right, now let's head over to La Tequileria so he can show us how to make these wonderful cocktails. My father was a visionary and brave man. He knew that in order to achieve great things, he had to take risks. He decided over 50 years ago to plant blue agave in his land in the small town of Guanacatlán, Jalisco, and was one of the first people in the region to do so, knowing that it would be at least seven years before they mature and were ready to be harvested. So he decided to emigrate to the United States undocumented. He worked, sent money back to us in Mexico supporting the family, and paid for the cultivation expenses of the agave fields. We reunited with him many years later here in Chicago. I was 17 years old. In tribute to the work and dedication of my parents, planting agave, and emigrating to the United States, we created the Adoro Tequila, a recognition of the effort of all those who have left their communities, their countries, with courage and hope for a better future for their family, never forgetting their roots and the land. Mexico has produced many renowned artists and muralists. One of the most important to the world is Frida Kahlo, Kahlo managed to transform her pain and suffering into inspiration and beauty. Just as tequila rises from the earth and with great perseverance becomes one of Mexico's greatest gifts to the world. And in continuing the tradition of agave and tequila in our family, my parents, brother and I opened La Tequileria in 2017, a premium tequila lounge in Melrose Park where my brothers and I were raised, an ambiance and decor that pays homage to our roots from Jalisco, where guests can fully experience over 160 of the highest quality brands of tequila. Generations old and new can come in and savor the diverse collection of tequilas, live music, art, and craft cocktails. And undoubtedly, our most popular cocktail, the Jesus Maria, has wild tequila and cocktail fans alike. So without further ado, our mixologist, Elliot Acosta. Hello everyone, my name is Elliot Acosta. I'm a mixologist here at the Tequilerias in 2017. And today we're gonna to show you how to make the Jesus Maria, the most popular cocktail here at the Tequilerias. We're using Adoro Reposado Tequila for this cocktail. One of my favorite Reposados, you can find it at the nearest Vinny's. But it's been sitting in barrels for three months, so it adds this nice little smokiness to it that just balances the cocktail very well. All right, inside your cocktail kit, you're gonna have your rim, you're gonna have your lime, you're gonna have your hibiscus infused tequila, you're gonna have a little bit of guava, 10 ounces, five ounces per cocktail. This is your shaker, you use this twice, one per cocktail. This is your jigger, the bottom part is two ounces, you turn it over, it's one ounce. This is your glassware, and this is a stir, so you can stir your cocktail at the end. To make the Jesus Maria cocktail, we're gonna have to infuse our tequila with hibiscus plants, dried hibiscus plants. And we're gonna let that marinate for two hours minimum. Now, if you like citric cocktails and you're making this at home, you might wanna leave that a little bit longer. It'll turn out to be more 
darker in color, a little bit more citric because of the leaf. This mixture here has a body of guava, but we've also added fresh lime juice. We also added a smoky pepper called morita. We actually blanch the morita, put a little heat to it. It brings all the flavors to it. Then we make it into a syrup. We add it into this concoction here with lime juice. But the, the, the money maker is the guava, the ripe guava um, that makes the cocktail. This rim here has dried hibiscus leaf. It has dried chipotle. We're also using a little bit of sugar and salt to make the rim. You guys are going to need a plate so we can pour your rim onto the plate, giving enough surface. You don't have to pour too much of it. Save some for later. But you need enough surface to cover the rim of the cocktail. Like so. And you're gonna need some ice. The first step to making like Zumeria is we want to rim our cocktail. We want to use lime juice, get it all over the top of the glass, tap the plate, make sure you get the whole cocktail, whole rim. And now you grab your Boston shaker, we're going to fill this with ice. Fill it to the very top with ice. Then we're going to use the guava concoction and we are going to use five ounces. Very top. You want to give this a really good shake, a good vigorous shake to mix the cocktail. Then you want to pour all ice and the concoction into the glass. All right, now we want to use our infused hibiscus tequila, and we're going to use two ounces. We're going to place this at the surface of the cocktail. As you can see, it seems like there's two cocktails in one. The next step is an important step. We're going to mix all the ingredients together. The guava has a little bit of thickness to it. And hibiscus, because it's so light, it stays at the top, but we want to make sure we embed all of them together. You want to work it in, you want to take your time with it, bring the guava from the bottom up, give it a nice little twist. The color should start changing to a brighter purple, brighter violet. This is the Jesus Maria Cato from Antequileria. I enjoyed doing this with you guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Salud. Jesus Maria is this good. Salute to everyone at home. I hope your cocktail turned out as good as mine. While you're enjoying your drink, we have a special message for you from Reina Torres, ambassador of Mexico and general counsel. Hello, this is Reina Torres. I'm Consul General of Mexico here in Chicago. And I am very happy to talk about this extraordinary exhibit organized by College of the Page. Uh, we all know that this was programmed to happen in 2020, but we also know that 2020 was a crazy year for everybody because of COVID-19. Um, nevertheless, it's uh, very fortunate that this year we're gonna be able to experience this exhibit. What can we say about Frida Kahlo? Frida Kahlo, I think is not only Mexican anymore, I think is universal figure that speaks about the, the colors, the textures of Mexico, our markets, our um, textiles. It speaks a lot about what Mexico is about, about the different cultures that blend together in this amazing country. Um, but Frida also speaks about women and what women experience in their lives, all the hardships, uh, but also the, the joy of life as, as she saw it. And, and you can see that in her paintings. Frida Kahlo is one of the most iconic figures in Mexican art and culture. But what I expect of this exhibit is not only for the people of uh, the community of the page, but also the people in Illinois and from many other parts of the US that may be able to come and visit this exhibit to see Mexico through the eyes of Frida. But beyond that, Frida is timeless. Uh, many young uh, artists in Mexico 
um, are expressing the same excitement about Mexico in their art. So I hope that this exhibit opens the eyes of many people that may be interested in learning more about Mexican culture. I know that College of the Page has made an enormous effort to bring this exhibit here. It's very exciting. This exhibit has been in many other museums all over the world. I hope that many people are encouraged by this incredible uh, opportunity and go visit College of the Page and see Frida Kahlo's work. Uh, but one of the things that excites me the most is that this is an exhibit that is for the community, that they are going to be uh, programming that will relate to Mexican, um, not only visual arts, but also music and gastronomy, and that kids are also going to be engaged in many activities organized by the college. So I encourage you, I invite you to uh, visit this exhibit, to be part of the different activities. We're very proud uh, that this is happening here in Illinois, and I can only expect an enormous success for this exhibit. Thank you so much. All right, we got some pictures from your parties at home, and I'm so excited to share them. So can you guys share them on the monitor with everybody? We have a family party with your papel picados. Those are handmade in Mexico, I want you to know. What's the next picture we have? There's another party. Where are the people? Where are the people at the party? But I love the table, it's gorgeous. There's the people. Oh, I love this. They look great, they all dressed, they're all dressed up. Oh, we have a beautiful setup in a kitchen. And then we have Walter who's texting home. Oh, and we have our guys in, in the control room. This is awesome. And there's our cameraman working so hard. Oh, and then there's me. Well, let's now see how Jeff is coming along on this painting. Je oh, wow, Jeff, it's looking beautiful. Thank you. You're working fast over there. Better work fast. You have to work fast. We have like about a half hour left. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You can keep painting. But it's looking really good. She's looking fantastic. I love the colors. Very springy. Okay. Is everybody hungry? Because I want to take you downtown Chicago and introduce you to Chef Carlos Gaetan. You may remember him from Top Chef. He's a great example of the American dream. Carlos came to the U.S. as an immigrant of Mexico and worked his way up from dishwasher to James Beard award-winning Michelin star chef, who is highly regarded worldwide. Are you ready to go? Let's go downtown right now. We are here with Chef Gaetan at Suco in Chicago and I wish you could know how amazing it smells in here. When I walked in, <laughs> my mouth started watering because he was cooking your dinner for tonight and I can't even tell you how amazing it smells. So I hope your kitchen smells as good as this, this restaurant. Thank you so much for doing Thank you. this for us. No, it's an honor for me to be uh, you know, cooking for you and everybody else. It's an honor, uh, even you know, Frida Kahlo, one of my inspirations. Uh, that I admire so much, you know, so uh, she's amazing and uh, knowing her story, knowing her food, I think is, is a really nice thing for us to do. You know, Frida had a lot of uh, perseverance and Absolutely. she made it through so much. And I know you have a tremendous amount of perseverance in reading about uh, your story and, and you have overcome great odds. You know, I think it, it's something, you know, in our traditional, you know, we had to fight for it get up on our feet, you know, and fight for it. And, and Frida Kahlo was really well known for that. Yeah. And, you know, and my story is very similar. And that's why it's such an honor to see your success. Thank you. To see your Mexicanidad and the pride Thanks. that you have in this beautiful restaurant. Can you tell everybody what you just told me about the inspiration of the decor? Well, the inspiration and decor, it comes from Huitzuco. Huitzuco is the place where I was born. Witsuko means place of thorns. That's why you see so many thorns in here. You're gonna find a lot of things in here, like you know, a couple containers that my grandfather used to use for uh, carrying water. And so many things in here that just when I look at over here, it's just like a museum this is of home. home. Yeah, this is the museum of home. It's gorgeous. Thank you. So tell us about 
It smells so good. Can you please <laughs> tell us about what inspired the menu for today? Well, the menu is, is it was a lot of fun, obviously, you know, learning. And a um, couple, couple weeks ago, I was looking at, uh, you know, the story of Rita, the things that she likes to do and things like that. Uh, one of the things they used to do a lot, they used to go to the markets. And when they used to go to the markets, uh, her husband used to eat uh, insects. You know, in Mexico, we eat a lot of insects, you know, they used to get guacamoles and uh, the one thing that he loves the most, it was worms. But I don't want to put worms on the menu. That's make, good. But I'm going to put some guacamole with grasshoppers. Grasshoppers, they're really, you know, there for like uh, the crunchiness, texture. It doesn't taste anything bad. It's more like a lemon kind of flavor and chili, really crisp. Uh, it's just something that it everybody should try. So when you try it, you want to use your finger right there. All right, here we go. I'll get the other one. Oh, they're good. When you try a lemon. It's really good. Yeah, so that's why we're gonna try, decide to get the uh, grasshoppers on the menu. I feel like we just jumped <laughs> off. I just jumped off into the world of grasshoppers. Yes. Do you know that it took <laughs> A James Beard award-winning chef to get me to eat an insect, and you really? did it. <laughs> Good to know. Thank you. And uh, another thing that, uh, you know, uh, Frida Kahlo used to love the market so much. And, and when you go to the markets in Mexico City, you find a lot of street food. Mm -hmm. And she was really into the street food. So we have some uh, carnitas. Uh, we call it suadero. And on the bottom is a tortilla that we call tlacoyo. And we make the sauce with a little bit of pork belly and tomatillo, serranos, garlic, and the meat. Basically, we cook it with all the uh, pork lard and all the uh, flavors from other meats. And, and this is when they make the uh, suadero, where it was one of the uh, favors of Frida Kahlo. So it's really amazing, it's really juicy, a uh, lots of flavor and it's something that you're gonna remember for a long, long time. And then can you tell us about this beautiful dessert? The dessert, well, we have a lot of sweets uh, in the market mm -hmm. that it sells wrapped in, in plastic most of the time. And uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and all those Mexican traditional uh, flavors. So what are we gonna do on this one? We're gonna do a traditional uh, Mexican arroz con leche and they're gonna have some flavors that she was really into, you know, cinnamon, coconut, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, we couldn't be luckier than to have you, <laughs> Thank you. Um, be a part of this celebration, and we hope that this is just the beginning, and that we'll, through the journey of this exhibition, it goes through the summer, we hope that we see you again, and we are so grateful to get to celebrate your food, thank and you. your culture, and, and thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for letting us be part of this, uh, something that will make us really proud and represent Frida Kahlo, I think is really amazing. You're Thank a good you. company. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if you're wondering, don't worry. Your guacamole did not have any crickets in it. They saved them all for me. So now, I'd like to introduce you to two very special people. The chairs of this year's gala, honorary chairs of the host committee for Frida Kahlo Timeless, and Alan Peterson's son and daughter-in-law, Mark and Marcy Peterson. My dad was always a guy of big ideas. I think he just put together his longtime love for the College of DuPage with his incredible friendship with Carlos Phillips and Carlos's mother's Dolores Olmedo's Frida Kahlo collection. And he thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if they brought it to Glen Ellen? And I think it was that merging of those two pieces into a big idea. The very first time he brought it to me, he said, I want to bring it to College of DuPage. And I said, don't you mean the Art Institute or the Museum of Contemporary Art? And he said, no, the College of DuPage. What I'm most excited about is actually seeing this dream that my dad had since the Cleve Carney Museum was created and to see it actually get here. Um, that is um, the fulfillment of your parents' wishes after they pass away. 
uh, is probably the most exciting thing I could think of. Because I worked very closely with Alan in trying to complete this dream. And his thought process was to highlight the College of DuPage. That it's kind of like this hidden gem. And a lot of people don't know about the Mackinac Art Center and all the good things that College of DuPage brings to the Western suburbs. It was part of paying back to the community. I cannot even express how touched I have been since we did that incredible gala last year in 2020. Unbelievable outpouring of help and support. One of my dad's points was in bringing things together, bringing um, the Carlos's uh, Phillips art uh, to the College of DuPage and bringing it to the um, growing uh, Hispanic community in the Western suburbs. And when we were at Frida Fest and seeing on a rainy day, people <laughs> lined up <laughs> to get in <laughs> an hour before it was supposed to start. And then to see how many people came and when it was absolutely full was incredible to see the enthusiasm. I know how much my dad would have loved to have been there. And, and that was just amazing to me. And um, I really didn't think I would feel the way I did that day. And I was just so proud. It was, it was magical. Yeah. It was truly magical. 2020 was a very challenging time. So losing my mom in January and then shutting down the country in March and losing my dad in April, it was clear that we weren't gonna do Frida in 2020. I wanted very much to make sure that we were able to do it. So it's, I, I feel that it spurred me more to wanna see this re become a reality rather than less, um, because I know how, and in my dad's last few years, how important this thing was to him. Um, I think he hung on uh, for a long, long time, time, long time, trying to um, uh, get to Frida coming, but um, didn't make it. We wanna give a heartfelt, uh, our heartfelt gratitude for everything that you've done. Um, we appreciate uh, all of your efforts and we know that this is going to lead to a wonderful exhibition of Frida's artwork. It's been a tough year for so many families and businesses. And for us, one of the hardest losses was losing the man who inspired all of this, Alan Peterson and his wife, Millie. Both of them passed in the same year. In Mexico, the word Recuérdame means remember me. And the theme from Disney's Coco encapsulates our love and respect for Alan and Millie. Here to sing it for you tonight, from Disney are the mariachi divas singing Recuérdame. Alan, we're remembering you tonight.
recuérdame Hoy me tengo que ir mi amor, recuérdame No llores por favor, te llevo en mi corazón Y cerca me tenderás a solas yo te cantaré Soñando en regresar, recuérdame Aunque tenga que migrar, recuérdame Hasta que en mis brazos estés, recuérdame. Dave McGowan, president of DuPage Foundation, has been a lifelong supporter of the MAC and really championed the Frida Kahlo exhibition with incredible generous donations. He is here with us tonight. Please welcome my friend, Dave McGowan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dave McGowan, president and CEO of DuPage Foundation, your local community foundation. And it's a pleasure to join you this evening. I not only represent DuPage Foundation, I'm a proud alum, along with my wife and two of our children. DuPage Foundation is delighted to support the Frida exhibit through its Cleve E. Carney Fund and the JCS Arts, Health, and Education Fund. The foundation always looks for impact with our grant making, and this exhibit has that in so many ways. It celebrates culture. It will boost our economy by attracting thousands of visitors and most importantly, it's an opportunity to see a famous art exhibit right here in our own backyard. COD is one of the foundation's top grant recipients over the course of our 35 year history. Grants have been made for programs inside the classroom and to support COD's community outreach, as well as for scholarships on behalf of our donors. Much of that support has been directed to the MAC because of its strong arts programming, which enhances the quality of life for area residents and because it is an economic engine in DuPage County. In fact, it was the leadership at the MAC that started the conversation about forming a countywide arts council, which is now one of DuPage Foundation's signature initiatives, Arts DuPage. One of DuPage Foundation's longtime trustees and former board chair, the late Cleve Carney, for whom the Max Gallery is named, would be so proud of our continued support for COD and this awesome exhibit in particular. Gracias por la oportunidad de estar con ustedes esta noche. Felicitaciones y los mejores deseos para un evento y exhibición exitosos. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you this evening. Congratulations and best wishes for a successful event and exhibit. Buenas noches. Good night. The most important part of any exhibition is the art. The most important role in any exhibition is the curator. The curator contextualizes the art for the visitors and brings relevancy to the experience. Here tonight is the curator of the Cleve Carney Museum and the Frida Kahlo Timeless Exhibit, Justin Witte. Hello, my name is Justin Witte and I'm the curator of the Cleve Carney Museum of Art, as well as the Frida Kahlo Timeless Exhibition. I wanna begin by thanking all of you for your support. To all of you who organized this amazing event, to all of you who are attending, none of this would be possible without you. Frida Kahlo's artwork, life, and story continue to serve as an inspiration for millions of people, attracting new fans generation after generation. Part of the reason for that is that she was committed to presenting her story and her vision in an honest, straightforward manner. And that honest representation of the trials of her own life provides a model of strength for those of us who are facing challenges in our own lives. So regardless of the period of time, people continue to be drawn to Frida Kahlo's story because they look for symbols of strength to help them through difficult times. And for that reason, 
Frida's story is timeless. What is so amazing about our exhibition is not only that we have 26 original works by one of the most famous artists of the 20th century, but it's that we have a completely immersive historical exhibition that provides context to Frida's life and story. That exhibition includes recreations of her bed, dresses, and some of the orthotic braces that she had to wear throughout her life. In addition, we have hundreds of photographs that capture Frida in her most personal and private setting, getting a sense of who this artist truly was. Then of course we have the amazing paintings themselves. We have paintings from the second year that she was painting to the last year that she was alive. Paintings that mark key points all across the arc of her career. But what perhaps is the most phenomenal aspect of these paintings is that when we get to see them this summer, we will be standing in front of a surface that Frida herself stared at over and over again for hours on end. A surface that she touched thousands of times. A surface that actually captured the dust in the air of her studio. These paintings are the story Frida wanted to tell in the way that she wanted to tell them. And we have an opportunity to spend some time in front of these works and get as close as possible to having a conversation with Frida Kahlo. I am so looking forward to the summer when I can welcome you all into the museum and this amazing exhibition. Thank you again for your support, and I'll see you soon. It gets me very excited when I start to see um, the exhibition coming to life, and um, it's truly getting close. The walls are up. You will be so surprised at the transformations in the lobby that have happened. So since since um, we've been we've been on, these photos keep coming, and we want to share some more photos with you right now. So let's take a look of your parties at home. Ooh, that looks like uh, there's, a, there's a little wine there. I think that's Mr. Sherman Neal. That looks like a good party there. Oh, that's a good one. Your cocktail looks awesome. Jamina Ivory. Thank you for sending your picture. I love your, your flowers and your hair. Oh, I wish I recognized everybody. It's hard for me to see this monitor. More cocktails. Looks like, looks like the cocktails are doing great. Oh, Rachel Prescott from Ball Horticulture. What a beautiful picture. She's growing all the flowers. And there's the control room. And there's more cocktails. Oh, what a great shot. That's Kirk Dillard's family. Thank you all for joining us. It's so fun to see everybody at home celebrating with us here. So Justin and I did a lot of research over the last few years, and it was very important to us that we somehow reflect the natural beauty of Mexico in the exhibition. Now, the ball garden is a big part of that. But now I want to take you with us on a short trip to Mexico to visit Frida Kahlo's house, the Olmedo Museum, where the art is coming from, and Diego and Frida's studio, so that you can see what inspired us. Let's go. Vamanos. We wanted to get to know Frida better, so we both took separate trips to Mexico, and we wanted to share our adventures with you. From the center of Mexico City, we took a wild cab ride to her home in Coyacan, about 30 miles south from the center. Her house is called Casa Azul, the blue house. It's U-shaped with a courtyard in the center, and you enter the living room through the courtyard in the back of the house, which is now a museum. Frida collected ex voto and retalbo paintings, which are small paintings asking the Virgin of Guadalupe or a saint for help or healing. These paintings greatly influenced Frida's work. This is Frida's dining room. Notice all the hand-painted plates and bowls on the shelf? These were her everyday dishes. Famous people from around the world would visit the Blue House and join Diego and Frida at this table for dinner. Off of the dining room is Diego's room. Notice his hat and overalls on the hook? 
On the dresser are pre-Columbian statues which he collected. And here we can see his death mask. Off the dining room in a lower level is the kitchen. Along this wall you will see Frida put their names on the wall and the long counter you see is actually a wood burning stove. There are holes for wood or charcoal and Frida credited this style of cooking to great cuisine. Off the lower level kitchen are stairs both to the main home and all the way up to Frida's studio. Considering her physical challenges, it's amazing that she chooses to have her studio up this large staircase, but you'll see why in a minute. Here is Frida's studio. As you can tell, she loved to read and study. There is her large book collection on display. And here is the rest of her beautiful studio, flooded with natural light overlooking her beloved garden. Frida had a day bed in her studio. On that bed, her death mask is displayed. And right next to this room is Frida's full bedroom. In this urn are her ashes. It's a frog-shaped urn, which was her nickname for Diego, Frog, and it represents her being safe inside Diego forever. Outside her day bed, is this gorgeous staircase that leads to her garden. Here's an iconic picture with Diego and Frida on that staircase. It's a picture that me and my wife Olivia were able to recreate when we visited last year. The garden has an expansive patio. Diego created this pyramid for the garden to showcase his pre-Columbian statues. But there was little time to enjoy the garden as we needed to get to meetings and took a taxi and headed over to the Dolores Olmedo Museum, 30 minutes further south in Xochimilco. But not to worry, there are gorgeous gardens at the Olmedo as well. Here is a photo of the late Dolores Olmedo with her beloved Xolo Quintle dogs. And to this day, these are dogs that run in the gardens and live on the property. I had the honor to have lunch with Carlos Phillips who welcomed me to the museum and pointed out the peacocks on the property. He shared stories of his mother Dolores, her relationship with Diego, and their inspiration for this museum. This photo of Diego and Frida is in the very front of the museum and welcomes you to the exhibition. This is Adriana Jarmillo, the Director of Communications and our contact at the Olmedo, who has become a great resource and wonderful partner to us. Here we see the amazing portrait of Luther Burbank by Frida Kahlo. Xolo Quintle pre-Columbian spirit dogs led people through the afterlife in the Mayan civilization. Here I am standing in front of Frida Kahlo's portrait. It was actually the first time I was able to view it in person. It was an amazing experience knowing that soon this piece, along with others, would travel to our museum. And then here is my wife Olivia and I as we left the beautiful Dolores Almedo Museum. But that's not all. There's one more place to understand how Frida and Diego lived and worked, and that's at Diego and Frida's studio, about 20 minutes northwest of the Olmedo Museum in San Angel. Their iconic studio house is known for a bridge that connects a large building with Diego's studio in it, with a smaller blue building which held Frida's studio. This house was designed by a famous modern architect and had a large curved exterior staircase. As you can see, Diego's studio is large, and bright, and playful. And the windows allowed him to lower sections of his murals from the second story to be delivered throughout the world. These skeleton-like figures are called Judas dolls and are paper mache effigies of traitors. They would be designed with the likeness of politicians who they felt betrayed them and they would strap firecrackers to them and light them off during the Easter season. This is Diego's bedroom. As you can see, it's very sparse with only a photo of Frida by his bed. Here's a photo of the infamous bridge that Frida crossed to go to Diego's side. And here I am crossing that bridge. Once over the bridge, Diego would walk down these narrow steps. And this is the view from those stairs. Here we see Frida's side of the house in her very simple bathroom. Perhaps this is what inspired this painting. 
This is the studio kitchen, which is far simpler than the Casa Azul, with only a small gas burner and sink. And here is Frida's studio at the San Angel home. Here's what it looked like while she was working. Above, we can see the painting Las Dos Fridas. The trips were so short, but there's always time for great food, seeing family and friends, and of course, making new friends. Now, after seeing Frida's garden, I think you can understand what inspired the garden for our exhibition being designed by the brilliant designers at Ball Horticulture and why it's going to be such an important aspect of the show. The garden will be a big draw to visitors. And speaking of visitors, we have DuPage County's superwoman of travel and tourism here with us tonight, Beth Marchetti. A big thank you to Beth and the Department of Commerce and Economic Development and Enjoy Illinois for their generous grants to help us bring the art home. So why is the timeless exhibit of Frida Kahlo's work so relevant and important to DuPage County? For years, I've been eagerly awaiting and planning for this world-class event to come to Glen Allen, Illinois. It is essential to draw visitors to DuPage this summer and to bring significant dollars back to our communities. All 38 municipalities of DuPage County, the entire Chicagoland area, and the state of Illinois will benefit from this cultural and long anticipated event. Frida's art inspires people and her work represents the power of determination. Frida and the Timeless Exhibit is a beacon of hope for all of us to rise above obstacles in our lives and champion the power within. We could all use a bit of that right now. From an economic perspective, this exhibit has the potential to draw tens of thousands of visitors to DuPage County, inject a whopping $8 million in our economies, and set the stage for future countywide cultural events. Frida's work has been seen on an international stage. And while travel and times have changed, our Midwest destination remains steadfast to responsibly welcome guests to the Cleve Carney Art Gallery at the Mackinac Art Center at College of DuPage. And quite simply, Frida is just good business. It will put hundreds of people back to work in DuPage County. While we are confident that many residents will enthusiastically reserve their tickets for this once-in-a-lifetime experience, we also know that this exhibit will entice out-of-town visitors to our destination. Leisure visitors spend nearly $150 per person per day in our restaurants, stores, and hotels. But these same guests will also have the opportunity to enjoy the healthy outdoor spaces, nature preserves, and trails that DuPage County is known for. Many of our communities have planned special experiences for our visitors as we roll out the red carpet. You can view various murals in our downtown communities, sip Frida-inspired cocktails in our vibrant culinary scene, or relax in one of the special Frida-themed hotel packages. DuPage County offers comfortable, convenient, and affordable road trip getaways. Now more than ever, we need reasons to celebrate. This event does just that. Frida's work has been seen in Budapest, Milan, London, and now Glen Ellen, Illinois in DuPage County. So join us as we do more celebrating in DuPage. Thank you. All right. We're gonna check on some of your photos from home because these pictures are getting better. I think the more you drink, the better the pictures are. So I wanna share some of these with you. Look at the, what they did with the flowers in her hair. I love those. They look great. Oh my gosh, even the dog's in on the party. That looks like Chief Norton with a sombrero and the dog is in on the party, I love it. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. You guys are all in. Oh my gosh, she's got her, her beautiful, that's Christine Fenny, our board chair. Christine, you look great. And more of the chief and his wife. Look at those sombreros. They are in the spirit. Oh, we have a family affair. I love this picture. Look how beautiful they're set up. 
And there it is with the show on the air. It's so fun to see you guys at home. Thank you so much for taking a minute to share your photos with us. We love seeing you at home. And this truly has been a celebration for the entire community. And as you can see, how many people have made Frida a part of their company or gotten involved. And we are so grateful. You know, during the last year, we had more time to think and we had to eliminate all the interactive hands-on parts of the exhibition and in the Children's Museum. And I thought, well, if kids could see Frida's house and learn about what life is like in Mexico, they would learn so much. And I shared this story with Mark White and I, I drew a little model that I thought might make a cute dollhouse and he um, had a Zoom meeting with me and he saw the idea and he said, yeah, you know what? our company is going to take this on. And I said, no, 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 Mark, I don't expect you to do this. I just want some advice. I want to know who you guys go to to get your models made. And he said to me, Diana, with all due respect, just get over it. This exhibition means a lot to me and to my company. And we can take this to a whole new level. I am so thrilled to share that tonight, Mark White and his team are designing and making a model of Frida's Casa Azul It'll be five by five in the children's area. And it's a replica model of her home, um, but like an architectural model. Um, and here to tell you uh, why he's doing it is this incredible donor, advisor, business partner, and a great resource and friend to the college, Mr. Mark White. Thank you for this terrific event, Diana. College of DuPage is White & Company's longest client. It precedes me. The Mackinac Art Center was my father's sunny signature project of his career, I might add. And in 1989, um, Kevin and I made the decision to have White & Company's 50th anniversary party in the gallery of the original building. It's a great privilege to redesign the Art Center. I mean, how many people can say that? that they designed a building and then 30, 40 years later, you have the opportunity to upgrade and redesign it. And that was our great, great privilege. It's a coincidence that Cleve Carney was one of my closest friends in life. He was considering a donation to the Art Center, independent of our being architect of the building. And so when I learned that, I was able to go over to Cleve's house. And I think I had something to do with his decision to finally um, give his um, art and money to be able to create what was then the Cleve Carney Art Space that became the Cleve Carney Art Gallery. And then lo and behold, COD lands the Frida exhibit. This is really an event. That's a fantastic thing. I remember seeing Budapest, London, College of DuPage, Glen Ellen. Um, it's, just, it, it, it's just a magnificent thing to be able to host. Imagine how everything comes, you know, kind of closes the circle when the college asked us to come back and turn Cleve Carney's Art Gallery into Cleve Carney's Art Museum. Greatest privileges of my life. Thank you very much uh, for participating today. It's our great pleasure to uh, help this event. And of course, when Diana asked us to help build a model of Casa Azul, you know, we're architects. We do that stuff. We are privileged to be able to help. Um, and Diana, I promise you, it's going to look fantastic. So thank you all. I hope you join me um, in helping this great exhibit. Thank you so much, Mark. I want to thank our title sponsor, who is the first organization to sign on and help lead this effort, Bank of America. I also want to thank our primary partner every single step of the way and the first people to say, yes, we will help you, the College of DuPage Foundation Board. Executive Director Karen Kuhn and President Sherman Neal for your incredible dedication, your partnership, your leadership. For now, we're going on four years. I think we're going to graduate. Thank you for everything you've done. None of this would be possible without you. And here tonight is one of my favorite board members, Mr. John Attard. Good evening and welcome to For the Love of Frida Virtual Fundraiser. When the idea of Frida Kahlo Timeless was born, none of us could have imagined the events that unfolded in 2020 or the need to launch this historic event digitally. Virtual exhibitions are expensive and these costs were not part of our original budget. 
This is why we've assembled tonight with a clear mission to raise funds to launch this exhibit virtually. As the foundation's mission is to increase educational and cultural opportunities for our community, an exhibition like this has never been offered by a community college. And to have the privilege to support something so unique was one that the foundation could not pass up. Frida has allowed the foundation to expand our network and partnerships while bringing a historically monumental experience to DuPage County. Frida Timeless is about bringing art and culture to our students and community. But the enduring qualities of this amazing artist represent so much more. Frida is prismatic and like our students, smart, talented, and fierce despite experiencing challenges and hardships that few will ever know. A lot has changed this past year and the need to offer this event both live and digitally is vital. We know that art heals and should be looked at and celebrated by everyone. And so it's time, time to experience Frida in the manner that feels safest to you. And we need your help and ensuring that this happens. So I humbly ask you to raise your paddles high and give. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now, I wanna properly introduce Walter. Walter is our new VP of um, Institutional Advancement at the college, which means he helps the college to advance their mission and also to raise money. Um, but Walter has, has been an interim for a while and been a great supporter and, and he just was newly minted as, and it's official, he's, he's, a, he's an official VP now. <laughs> but I'm so grateful, he comes with much experience from YMCA, North Central College, he also worked at the Chicago Hope Academy. And bringing his new perspective um, and his deep enthusiasm and support and can-do attitude has been a breath of fresh air. We are so grateful to have his energy and talent with us. And now you're gonna get to see him in action. He is gonna run the paddle raise part of our evening. So Walter, take it away. Diana, thank you very much. It's a, as I said earlier, it's a pleasure to be here. Now this is, this is unique. I've done paddle raises before. They've all been live with an audience, people I can see, and folks that I could point to or come over and jab or, or mess around with their wallet to get them to give. Well, I can't see any of you, any of you all, so this is gonna be an interesting process, but I know it will work well. I first wanna, wanna thank all of our volunteers. We couldn't do this without them. And those who've been patrons of the arts and, and our sponsors, you make all the difference in the world. But I also wanna point out the work of Diana. And those of you who know her, you know that there is no mountain too high, no valley too low, and, and no river wide enough for her not to do everything she could possibly do to bring art into our lives. And so I, I wanna take this moment to say thank you, Diana, on behalf of the community and the College of DuPage for the work that you've done. Now, we need everyone at this moment to really think hard and dig deep to help us raise money for three very important initiatives associated with, with this venture. One, we need to make sure we can cover the cost of the White & Company designed Frida House exhibit. And even though, um, Mark, uh, even, though the, even though that exhibit is going to be underwritten um, by uh, White & Company, there's still some cost that we want you to help us with. In addition, there's the virtual uh, exhibit. There wasn't a budget for that, but it's absolutely something that we think is important to, to bring to the community. And then finally, it's Art on the Mart. Now, if you are a fan of public art, this is a bucket list item. To have the opportunity to, to have Frida um, on the Merchandise Mart for all the public to see, that's an incredible opportunity and we really are looking forward to having that and we need your support to do it. So before we get started, one last thing I want to plug. Now, 
You heard about and you saw the pictures of this beautiful home in Mexico. If you haven't put your bid in yet on that, folks, that is an awesome opportunity. And, and I'm hoping that if you believe that going to see you know, where Frida lived and, and having an opportunity to, to be a part of this, this whole experience that you would bid on that. Now, I'm going to open the paddle raise at $2,000. If you have the ability to give, this is your moment to step up and give $2,000. You can, you can give by, by going to Frida2.givesmart.com or call 630-942-2462. We're starting the paddle raise at $2,000. Now, I feel like an auctioneer with no one in the room, so I'm hoping that somebody will step up. Oh my gosh, we've got one. Todd and Mimi Millenberg, $2,000. In fact, I know a little bit about them. I'll come back to that later. Uh, 2000 Thank you, Todd and, and, and Mimi. Appreciate you stepping up. Anybody else at $2,000? $2,000, $2,000, Avram Tucker. I know who Avram Tucker is. Thank you, Avram. Avram was business partner of Alan Peterson's. What a great gift. What a great gift. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Anybody else? $2,000, $2,000. I see the tote board just jumped. Wow. Shelly Weller. Shelly is a colleague of mine at the college. Oh my gosh, Shelly, this is so generous. I, I, you, you, don't, you guys don't know Shelly, but she has a laugh that can fill two rooms. Shelly, how generous, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Anyone else at $2,000, $2,000. I'm gonna update the tote board to see where we are. Okay, anyone at $1,000? $1,000. Remember, you go to Frida2, the number 2, dot givesmart.com or call 630-942-2462. Okay, $1,000. Can we have anybody at $1,000? You know what? There are those of you who will go out to dinner when there wasn't a pandemic, and you would spend more than $1,000 on a night. This, this is going to go for public art. This is going to go for the, for the virtual experience, and this is going to help us underwrite this beautiful replica of Frida's home. Mary Locker. I know this person. Well, I know about her. I shouldn't say I know her. Mary, thank you very much. If you know, if you've ever seen the Dick Tracy statue in Naperville, Mary was a big part of that happening. So Mary, thank you very much. I know you and your, hus you and your husband were, are, have always been great fans of public art. And uh, I believe your husband designed that, that uh, if I recall, designed that, that statue downtown Naperville. So thank you for your generous contribution of $1,000. Um, Lisa, and I'm, gonna, I I'm probably going to really butcher your last name, so forgive me in advance. It's Lisa Sevengato. Lisa had already given, and she just gave again, $1,000. Savignago. Savignago. I have somebody here who actually knows how to pronounce names, and they kind of whispered in my ear. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. We're, we're, we're at $10,970. We're still trying to push. We'd love to get to $15,000. We've got less than $5,000 to go. Can we have anybody else at $1,000? Anybody else at $1,000? I'm going to move to 500. This is the opportunity for those of you who can, can do $500. Give your $500 now. This would be great. Remember, there's three things that we're trying to take care of. One, as I said before, is the virtual experience. The other is the, the Frida House replica. And finally, it is Art on the Mart. And folks, $500, we're going to get closer. I'm, I'm going to see if I can up date the, the tote board again. I'm going to give my own $500 at this point. And, and I'm going to tell you that our executive director, now that I've said this publicly, she's going to make sure she gets my $500. So, so you can guarantee you can plug that in. That's going to happen. $500. Who will join me at $500? $500. 
I'm looking for one more person. Come on, $500. $500. We have several gifts coming in at $250. I'm hoping we can get at least one at $500. Going once, going twice. Let's go to $250. $250. Who can join me at $250? Well, I just saw one come in anonymous. Well, whoever you are, thank you for your contribution of $250. Greatly appreciate that. Oh. Joan Morrissey. I knew her husband when I worked at the YMCA. Joan, thank you very much for your contribution. We have some other ones coming in. Oh, my gosh. Another board member, John Shimp. John? Thank you for your support. Annette Shoemaker, she's another foundation board member. Thank you very much for helping us out. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're at 11, we're at $12,220. Folks, we are almost there. Anna, thank you very much. Anna Ball, who is already a big supporter of this, has stepped up again. Thank you very much, Anna. We, I'll tell you a quick story about Anna while we're waiting for more gifts to come in. Anna was a big supporter of the YMCA when I was there, her and her father. And in my first year, uh, I had a chance to meet her and her, her sister, I believe. They came by the office, just a wonderful woman um, and, and a longtime resident of Glen Ellen. Thank you very much. God bless you for what you're doing. We're at 12-7, folks. We are almost there. We're almost there. Anybody else at $250? Now, $100, $100, and you can give more, just $13,370. 13, We're 89% to our goal. Julie, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're gonna keep updating this thing. Folks, we are so close. $3,000 will put us over the top. I know somebody can write a check for $3,000 will put us over the top. But in the meantime, if you've got $100, please help. Oh my gosh, a longtime friend of mine, um, Renee Calabrese, she is, well, her name is really, um, and I'm gonna mispronounce it, so I'm not even trying to go there. Actually, it's Macarena, it's Rena uh, Calabrese. She is the president of the Naperville um, um, Heritage Society. Um, she, she oversees the, um, the museum there in Naperville. Thank you very much for your support. Fantastic. We're so close, folks. So close. Deanna Anderson, thank you. Thank you so much. Patricia Conway, thank you. Bradley Evans, wow, how did I miss you earlier? Thank you, Bradley. We're at $14,370. We are 96% to our goal. Douglas Peterson, thank you, Douglas. Oh my gosh, this is great. This is a fantastic situation. This is so great, $14,870. We are getting so close. This would be the culmination of the evening. We are almost there, almost there. We need less than $200. One more person. One more per We did it, folks. We did it. We're over $15,000. There we are. $15,370. We did it. All of you did it. Congratulate yourself. Hey, raise your glass. I can't drink because I got to drive home. So raise your glass. A toast to the fantastic job that everyone did. Thank you for every contribution. Dana? Oh, we're almost there. I got it. I'm going to paint it one more time. It's back to you. Walter, thank you. This is Walter's really first big event and he knocked it out of the park. So thank you, Walter. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all of you at home who have donated and given so much. I have to tell you, um, when I was delivering some, some meals today, the enthusiasm and the excitement and all of the people who've donated prizes and all the people who bought tickets and are, are joining us tonight, 
I just want to personally say thank you. You mean the world to me. I can't wait to um, bring this home, bring this exhibition home. And um, I just can't tell you how grateful all of us here are tonight. So thank you. Before we end, I have to show you how awesome this painting is looking. He is almost done. Jeff, it's gorgeous. The white flowers really make it pop. Thank you. It came out great. It's so funny, every time I turned around, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She's looking fantastic. You did a beautiful job. Thank you very much. Thank you, and for all of your contributions. And, and your art has inspired so many people in town to get excited. And I see people taking pictures and they send them to me. So thank you for sharing your talent. You're welcome, very welcome. Thank you. So you can bid on this tonight and have it at your house. And it'll be a little part of history because um, you know, this is the first time an exhibition of this caliber has ever, ever come uh, to Glen Ellen. And I think, you know, the big thing that people always talk about, like, oh, what's really famous about Glen Ellen? They say, oh, the movie Lucas was filmed here. Well, maybe, just maybe, Maybe this will bump Lucas that will have had the Frida Kahlo exhibition here. So, the auction is staying open until 10 p.m. tonight, so be sure to go on to frida2givesmart.com and bid. I want to thank all the hardworking gala committee who got you all here tonight, who helped us to get these beautiful prizes donated and helped deliver meals today. We can't wait um, to see you in person. They have worked so hard all over Zoom making tonight happen. Thank you so much to our gala committee. You did an amazing job and we did it. We met our goals, so thank you. And on behalf of all of us at the Mackinac Art Center and the Cleve Carney Museum of Art, we cannot wait to host you at the exhibition this summer. Thank you all for joining us and celebrating with us. We wanna leave you with all the best wishes to stay happy and stay healthy until we meet in person. And we'll leave you with some photos of the parties going on all throughout the Chicagoland area. Thank you again. Gracias y buenas noches. Thanks everybody.